button powered on, each side also has individual pod shutoff. So as you articulate each pod up and down, it'll turn power on and off accordingly, increasing battery life and making admin tasks just a ton easier. And yeah, on dual PVS14 setups, I guess you can articulate them separately too. But then what? When you articulate it up, what, you just turn each one of them off separately. And then, okay, so this one's on. And then you articulate it back down. Then you have to turn this one back on. Ugh, no, no, that sounds obnoxious. Hey, what's up my favorite bearded large potsters? Today I got a fun product to show you that gives you some actual superpowers. So as my wizarding brothers, trust me when I tell you that this one is right up your alley. Today we'll be taking a look at the Nocturne Manicore R and go over the features and operation of this device. Now, as we talked about before, it can be difficult to navigate night vision and all like the G, P, N, G, A, N, G, R, B, N, V, D, all that nonsense. It's just hard to make sense of all that and all those monikers are about the same as like trying to figure out the Safari Land naming convention. So we're gonna look at the Manicor R as just like a normal person. Hopefully by me reviewing this and giving you an overview, it gives you two things. One, a better understanding of what housings are actually out there and what they offer. And two, what options you actually need in a housing that you're looking to purchase, instead of just guessing at what you may or may not need. These dual knot housings, hell, any night vision housings are extremely expensive and it would be just so hair pullingly frustrating to spend all this money and then not get exactly what you want. So far beyond even this video or anything I'm gonna tell you, if you're serious about buying night vision before you purchase, call Nocturne Industries, call Dark Industries, call Custom Night Vision, work with them so you're buying exactly what you want and what you need. I can save you a little bit though if you use discount code TLDCO over at nocturneindustries.com if you buy your housings over there. Now, before we get way into the weeds on this, let's take a moment and talk about my biases. Personally, I think Nocturne is just a fantastic group of guys and I love what they do and they are a huge supporter of the channel and what we do here at TLD. So I am pretty biased because I believe in what those guys are doing and Nocturne, they're just the type of people that I wanna grow old with. I say that to remind you to watch other videos than just mine because I am biased towards Nocturne because they are just, just good ass people. As an alternative, make sure to check out Cold Harbor Media or Custom Night Vision for some other perspectives of the Manicore R as it pertains to other options on the market. I just want you to be the most educated consumer possible, particularly if you're making such a large purchase. Now, let me show you some of the other previous night vision offerings we've talked about before we take things up a level with the Manicore R. Previously, I showed you the Tanto and Daisho bridge setup. This configuration gives you an incredibly smart upgrade path where you can begin with a single Tanto and slowly upgrade to add in another Tanto and a Daisho bridge to have a fully articulating dual knot setup. And that Tanto to Daisho setup is really where I recommend most people start in night vision because everything's so damn expensive. You go the PVS14 route and then you end up like me where you wanna upgrade into something, you're just stuck with it and you have to figure out what to do with it or sell it. And the Tanto to Daisho is just a much cleaner way to move through your process and your growth through night vision from a single to dual setups. I don't care what other people tell you or how they try to cope with it in their mind. Dual nod setups are, are clunky, they're heavy, and the only reason you're gonna use that setup is because you don't have a better option. So our Manicore R is that jump upward where maybe you're like me and you already have a PVS14 and now you wanna have a dedicated dual nod setup. Okay, I seem to need to say this every time too. We're talking about the housing. The Manicore R is the housing that holds your illuminators. The illuminators themselves go inside and can be LBID or L3 like I'm showing here with various different options also. So it's the housing and I know I'm still gonna get 20 questions about what it looks like through the tube. I will show a bunch of that as we go through the video though. Regardless, let's put this on the table. And let's go over all the different features of it. Here I have my Manicore R all set up with first person recorders and irises. 
but let's take all this off and we can build into that and I'll explain it all. Here we have our Manicar R now in its standard from the factory configuration. From the housing, we see the R in the name stands for ruggedized as each piece is CNC'd out of 7076 T6 aluminum. It's pretty impressive when you see the design and then realize all of that was just cut out of a single block of aluminum. The Nocturne guys even dropped the Manicor R from over 130 feet from a drone just to show up what this housing can do. So I know we all have that one friend that buys a T2 because they're so clumsy they just plan on smashing their optics into rocks. And good news, you can tell them you found the perfect night vision housing for them. I do love those scope reviews out there that are like, I wonder if my scope's gonna survive getting smashed by a boulder. Oh, oh no it didn't. Dude, it, it's aluminum and glass. I just, I, don't, I watch some of those things, I, I just can't sometimes. Sorry, I'll try to stay focused. Now the Manicore R isn't designed to go snorkeling, but it actually does exceed the IP68 rating from their testing also. Just don't throw it in a lake to test that out, it'll sink, and that's why the retention rings are so important, and we'll go over all that as we talk about more of the housing. We also see that the Manicore R is designed for the use of standard PVS-14 optics, so you can use common mil-spec Carson glass like I have on my PVS-14, lightweight RPO 3.0 glass, which is what I went with, or the newer boom slang glass that give you that wider field of view. And I've heard nothing but magic about how well the boom slangs work to give you that wider field of view and let you see more than just that single toilet paper tube. I didn't go that route because I do so many reviews and testing. I want to be able to use the brown bear, like the first person recording devices on those things. And if you don't have those lined up perfectly center on the boom slangs, you get this really distorted view. So the boom slangs really wouldn't work for what I wanted to do and what I wanted to capture. And actually the mil spec glass is the best quality if you're trying to do the first person recordings just because of the way they're made. But if you're not looking to do any sort of first person stuff or do any of that, then absolutely go the boom slang route as I think that's just the overall best option in terms of optics. Back on our unit, the Manicore LED ring also goes all the way around. So you don't have this single side LED like on the PVS-14 to show you low battery or IR illumination indication. And instead you have a red ring that travels the entire circle of the housing. The ring being lit up involves some super cool weight saving stuff that Cold Harbor Media goes over. It's really more of his area of expertise because there's a lot more on the assembly side of things. The front optics are also the same size as our PVS-14 options, so you can use the same cheap iris option I showed you earlier that you can just find on Amazon. Paying $400 for an iris is, uh, is kind of stupid, and I certainly don't support any company that is is willing to charge you that for this type of device. One other cool bit also, the infinity ring lock comes set from the factory. So you can adjust it to see objects closer, but then quickly snap back to that infinity stop. I like this bit a lot because I'm not having to find something to stare at in the distance to try to set my infinity again after looking at closer objects, or if I was transitioning indoors. I think the infinity locking ring is something that's more common on some of the higher end night vision housings now, but it's definitely a nice quality of life feature to have on this setup. Moving to the center body, we see a centralized battery housing for ease of installation, and the Manicor R uses a single CR123 battery for a rated runtime of approximately 25 hours. If you're not using a battery pack, make sure you also know how to change your battery, just in case you're out in the field and you run into a power issue and it's pitch black out. It's just something most people don't think about and it's 100% something you should train and be proficient in, like being able to get out your battery, feel for the correct orientation, and be able to reinstall everything and get yourself back up and running, even with your eyes closed. Now I mentioned a battery pack and as another power option, the Manicore R also uses the two pin Limo port to give you a small lightweight connection system with the port facing rearward so you can run the cable up and through your mount. This allows you to play nice with the backpack if you want to run a rear battery pack to give you a ton more battery life. Some folks hate battery packs, so that's really up to you in terms of preference, but I like my battery pack pulling double duty with being a counterweight and giving me a ton more battery life. 
The battery pack style is also more of what we're seeing in that generational leap of helmets like in the rail link. And it would be really cool if we see something to connect into where they're using that same Limo two pin port on the rail link setup. Back on the Manicore, on the rear we see some adjustment screws and our IPD stops. The IPD system is smart and easy to use as you just lift it upward to reset the position, then bring it down onto your eyes to set the stops. Then once set, you can move and articulate the housing and have it come right back into your set position. I also want to note that during the Dice Show video, I did comment that I wish the IPD stops were better. And what I found was really interesting is that on the Manicore R, they're just absolutely perfect. I actually asked Nocturne what the difference was. And because the Manicore R isn't designed to come apart, the IPD stops are actually set from the factory. Where the Dice Show is more designed to be removed and reinstalled if you wanted to change configurations. Which means the Manicore R IPD stops are more true to how Nocturne actually envisioned it. And I'll say using it with the IPD stops set from the factory as to how they actually designed the whole system, it works just, just fantastically. Now, I will tell you this. Do not, do not adjust this screw for the Manicore R. This is the IPD stop screw. Hell, fill it with epoxy or something. If you mess with it, your IPD stop setting will get all jacked up. Just, just avoid this thing altogether. Now the screw inboard of this is the pod tension screw. This one you can mess with if you want a more tight or loose moving articulation of each of the pods. I found the pod tension was pretty perfect out of the box, but yes, you can adjust the inboard screw, but, but no, no, not the outboard outside one. Don't, don't mess with that. I think the inboard screws do have a dab of Loctite on them, so just be aware of that. You're gonna need to break a little bit of torque when you go to loosen these or, or change the actual adjustment setting. Just remember to also add a little bit of Loctite if you are to change this pod tension. No, just no on the outside one. You will make, you will make a wonderful mess for yourself. Now also included here are two lanyard retention rings, so you can easily connect in whatever helmet retention system you wanna use. The rings make it easy to tie in bungees or use these nice clips that we're seeing on some upgraded options. I wanna say this as a public service announcement, use the damn lanyard connection and use a good lanyard connection system. I've heard horror stories about people losing their whole night vision in a lake where like the bungees just come off or they use a, like a hook and loop attachment system to their helmet and then the night vision falls off and the whole hook and loop system just <laughs> falls off with it. If you lose your nods in a lake, I will be the first person to laugh at you. So please, please don't be that guy. Now moving to the front of the Manicore, we see the front push button controls with the IR illuminator in the center. For power, you have the button the furthest to the right that you hold for two seconds. The red indicator ring will illuminate so you can see it turned on, and then the red indicator goes off after just a moment. When powered on, each side also has individual pod shutoff, so as you articulate each pod up and down, it'll turn power on and off accordingly, increasing battery life and making admin tasks just a ton easier. And yeah, on dual PVS14 setups, I guess you can articulate them separately too, but then what? When you articulate it up, you just turn each one of them off separately? And then, okay, so this one's on, and then you articulate it back down, then you have to turn this one back on? Ugh, no. No, that sounds obnoxious. Oh, you'll enjoy this one though, uh, because it's kind of funny. I kept thinking I broke something on the Manicore R when I tried to turn it on, but it turns out, turns out I'm just an idiot. To prevent being a full moron, make sure you have both pods down, or at least one if you're doing a function check, or it won't turn on and you, like me, will try three or four batteries before you realize that you're just an idiot. I honestly wish I could tell you that I had only done that once, but no, that is not the case. To power the unit off, you just hold the power button for the same two seconds. Next, we move down the line in order of controls to the IR indicator activation. In order to prevent inadvertent IR light, this button is two clicks to activate. Here I found the IR was actually useful and a stark comparison to the crap that the PVS-14 comes with. With the illuminator on the center of the housing, you don't have any of the shadow from the unit itself. And I found it worked great when out on hikes when you just don't have enough moonlight or you're in a heavy canopy. The IR also worked fantastic when paired with the iris to quickly move from outdoors to indoors to change my focal length 
but then punch the light back up without having to jack with my focus when moving back outside. I had to spend some time with it to adjust to a different style of controls, but I like how every push button is a deliberate action. I think the push buttons will be the largest hurdle for some people to overcome as it's a different motor function, but I will say that after I've used it a ton, it was pretty intuitive and it wasn't a deal breaker for me at all. I kind of found that with the push buttons, every action is intentional and purposeful and nothing just turns on randomly unless you just don't know what the buttons actually do. Plus, I never really found myself just fiddling with all the different settings. I would go out in a certain environment and I would set things very purposefully how I want them to be. And I wouldn't want those settings to be adjusted if like my nods bumped into something or I hit it and everything got knocked out of whack. Moving down our controls, we also have our manual gain. These buttons allow us to do one click step up or down so you can click to the desired setting or you can hold it for continual dimming and brightening. I'm not gonna lie to you, I thought manual gain was one of the most important things I was gonna need because I thought I was gonna need to, you know, control the exposure of the image and be able to get better quality footage for everybody when looking through the actual night vision device. I really just considered that adjustment of brightness to be absolutely pivotal. Now that I have it, I don't think I've ever even used it. And I'll go so far to say that I don't think manual gain is all that important for 99% of all the people that are out there. Let me explain. The tube already comes set at a fixed gain and you're not gonna go any brighter. It only steps down. Combine that with the already fantastic auto gating and outside of some very rare instances of low light, I never found the need to step the light down and didn't need to adjust it for any recording either. Now, if you were patrolling the same position or area for a long period of time, I could see how it would be useful to bring the brightness down to rest your eyes. The manual gain is just designed for very, very specific end users and very, very specific contracts. And I thought it was gonna be a must have feature for me and it really, really wasn't. Now, maybe that'll change as I use it in different environments, but hell, even the highest, craziest stuff with the quad tubes doesn't have manual gain. So it's a bit of a hard sell for me when you have guys out there that tell you that manual gain is absolutely pivotal for the mid and lower tier stuff, but not pivotal for the super high end good stuff. That just, I have, I have trouble connecting that logic. Ultimately, you buy what you want and what you need, I'll just say manual gain is something I can just take or leave. It's, it's not that big of a deal. And in that vein, a unit like the Katana would be another fantastic option to save some extra weight on features you, you may not have to have. The IR Illuminator on the Manicore R though, I do love that, I'm not gonna lie to you there. And having the manual gain being that deliberate button press with the set it and forget it is kind of the chef kiss to the whole thing too. Looking at weight, I took everything off. We see a naked weight with a battery installed of 484 grams and 598 grams with my iris and brown bear setup like I normally run it if you want an idea for weight comparisons. So it's a bit crazy that it's almost half the weight of a dual PVS-14 setup and a <laughs> ton stronger. All right, so that's the whole housing and features. So what are my thoughts before we add all of our doodads back in and set everything back up? Using the Manicore R in a ton of testing, reviews, and just nighttime fun, I just love this thing. The individual pod shutoff is just a huge convenience from an admin use, or even if I were to be flipping over to a thermal optic, I could do that seamlessly. You have purposeful activation from power to IR, so you can't accidentally turn anything on, paired with a great IR illuminator up front. The articulation and IPD stops allow for compact stowage, that then can reset and return right back into a deployed position, giving you one of the most feature-rich night vision housings on the market. I know I'm slanted because I, I like the Nocturne guys, but this housing is just amazing and you really can't go wrong if you were to pick up the Manicore R. I think the only hurdle is learning the push buttons over the rotary dial, but I think you will end up liking the push buttons in the end, kind of like I did and I was kind of surprised by that. But yeah, Manicore R, definitely badass overall. Now I have them all installed here. Let me show you how to do it and add all our goodies back in. Starting with the front, I add in some simple Amazon irises that you saw earlier that just screw into the front of the housing. 
and then you can use some sacrificial lenses to protect the aperture device. We can also connect back in our Brown Bear NVGR Pro so we can make first person recordings of all of our night vision adventures. Now, I know I'm glossing over the whole iris thing and the brown bear and all the other night vision doodads, but they really do require a ton more explanation. So stay tuned and I'll bring you more content where we go over night vision cleaning, accessories, and how to use all this stuff in your night vision adventures. Hell, half the stuff I don't even know how to use, so it's gonna be fun to learn it all together. But I hope this video on the Nocturne Industry Manicore R was useful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon members and all YouTube supporters. You guys make it possible we can test out badass night vision stuff like this and test out housings and kinda of go out there and find out what's worth your money and maybe what isn't. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below on what you think is the best night vision housing out on the market. I wanna see, maybe we can get out here and test it out. All right, everyone, have a good one. Walsh out. Is that an alligator? Like, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Is that is that a gator in the water? Let's find something we could throw at it, and maybe we could see. I got it on both cameras right now, so maybe you can see on my PBS 14. And what's that? Just a bunch of bugs. Find a rock or something to throw at it. think so. Hope you got to see the sweet alligator footage. It it was uh it was not an alligator. Pretty sure pretty sure if you look at the footage it's just a rock.